Hey guys, it is the Bearded Tangent, and today we're going to look at linear velocity. So we've been given a problem uh, where we have a bicycle, we know the diameter of the tire, and we know how many revolutions per minute the tire is going around. And we want to know how many miles per hour the bicycle is going to be traveling. So uh, they've given us that the diameter of our tire is 30 inches, uh, that the tire is going 141 revolutions per minute, and they want us to tell them the miles per hour that the bicycle is going. So we can use linear velocity to solve this problem. Uh, we're going to have to convert a few units as we go, but that's all right. We'll use dimensional analysis or train tracks to help us keep all that in order. So we need to remember that linear velocity is going to equal r times w, where r is the radius, and w, or omega, is the angular velocity. Okay, so let's look at the information given. Um, we are given that the diameter equals 30 inches, so we know that we can half that, and that will give us a radius of 15 inches. So I can take that and plug that in for R. So I have 15 inches. We do not know the angular velocity currently, but we do know 141 revolutions per minute, which is almost the angular velocity. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in, 141 revolutions in one minute. And then we don't know our final answer, but we do know that they want it to be in miles per hour. All right, so we have a little bit of work to do. Uh, we're currently in inches, and we need to move that to miles, so we're going to have to uh, convert a few units. Uh, we're in revolutions, so to get angular velocity, this needs to be in radians, so we're going to have to convert that from revolutions to radians and then convert our minutes to hours so that we are in the proper unit there as well. So let's get started. So I have 15 inches, so I want to go from inches to miles. Now most of us probably don't know right offhand how many inches are in a mile, but we can do a couple of conversions to get us there a little bit easier. So um, we could convert that 12 inches equals one foot. And so by doing this, um, this is roughly the same thing, so this is going to equal 1, so this allows us to cross out my inches and just leave me with 1 foot now. So I have changed my units from inches to feet, but I've left everything the same. Okay, so now I need to do the same thing and get feet to miles. So I want 1 mile on top, so on bottom that means I have to do 5,280 feet. So that's going to cancel out feet there. So on top, I'm in miles. I need to be in miles to get in, so that's good there. All right, that takes care of the radius portion of our problem. All that was the radius of the tire. We were just converting it to miles instead of inches. So now we need to take care of the angular velocity portion. All right, so we said earlier that we have revolutions. We need to convert that to radians to actually get angular velocity. So I'm going to put one revolution on bottom which would equal 2 pi radians on top. So that takes care of the revolutions. All right, and then we need to convert minutes to hours. So I have that 60 minutes equals 1 hour. So that converts from minutes to hours, so we can cancel those out. So uh, at this point, I always like to just do a quick glance to make sure I have the units I need. So on top, I have miles, which is what I want at the very end. I also have radians, which I need to be in to be in angular velocity. On bottom, I have hours, which is what I need to be in. So we are good to go. We have done all our conversions. So at this point, we want to take any significant number from the top and bottom and pull them out. Okay, so we don't need to worry about the ones because they're not going to change anything. So that means on top, we want to get 15. We want 141. We want 2 pi, and we want 60, all right? So we can multiply all those together and put them over 12 
times 5,280. And so we can take this, plug this into our calculator, and if we do, we're going to get that the bicycle is going at 12.6 miles per hour. So just converting our units uh, and sticking with our formula of radius time angular velocity, uh, we were able to find out how fast our bicycle was going in miles per hour with only knowing the diameter of the wheel and how many times a minute the wheel was rotating. So I uh, hope this problem helps you guys out. I'll be posting some more on linear and angular velocity uh, in the next few days. So thanks for watching. See you next time.